roundtable lunch on uh, Thursday at Oscars. Please join us there. It's been a nice tradition over the last few years. Uh, once again, that is the Red Out Week. We are in the thick of it right now. Brought to you by Union Bank and Trust. You can find more details if you'd like at 1620thezone.com. Step chart slash game notes. This is the one time a year where we actually care about the depth chart because it matters this time around. We get to see finally who, what has happened, who's where, where do you stand? First of all, game notes. Broadcast crew, the Fox crew this weekend. This is important. Jason Benetti, Brock Heward, Allison Williams. That's a good crew. Yeah, I like it. I like it. That is a nice crew. Uh, I think that might be the second Fox crew or third or something. And they kind of mix and mash at this point during the year because there's a bunch of other stuff going on. Um, this week's numbers, according to Keith Mann and the and the research team over at the uh, University of Nebraska. Hi, Keith. Dylan Raiola is expected to start at quarterback against UTEP. If Raiola does start, what do you mean by that? <laughs> he would join Adrian Martinez as the only true freshman quarterbacks to start a season opener in school history. That's a number to know. Two. 42. Offensive tackle Bryce Benhart is expected to start at right tackle. The start would be the 42nd of his career and would establish a new record for career starts by a Husker offensive lineman. Wow. That's a long time to be in college football, folks, and certainly a long time to be starting. All right. To the depth chart. So, like I said, you got Dylan, you got Heine, you got Danny. One, two, three, no oars. My eyes then went to the running back. How are they going to do this? What I thought they were going to do, and we would have, I, I didn't expect it to come out this early, but we would have had a whole prediction about this. I, I thought they were going to do Emmett Johnson, one, and then Gabe Irvin or Ramir Johnson at Co. two. Ramir. Here's what they did. Everybody's number one. Ramir Johnson or Emmett Johnson or Gabe Irvin or Dante Dowdell. There's four of them. Which I it, I I knew that Dante Dowdell was kind of coming on a little bit here, and they were waiting for him to step up a little bit. Um but I I I didn't know it was the I didn't know it was that serious. So we have a we have a four-headed monster at running back. I don't love it. I don't either. Okay. Whew. Glad my gut was right on Here's that Here's the other way you could look at it, Josh. Um, like, I don't know. If you were kind of borderline conspiracy theorist, you might say this. Many of you are in the YouTube chat. Listen up. I, and I think there's a lot of this with depth chart. Like, the, the way that you tell the public who's going to be, who's going to play. And who's going to be good? I think Nebraska and Matt Rule particularly is really careful about telling the guys who aren't playing. We heard the story from Rule on Friday. He told Heine first about Dylan being the starting quarterback. He's like, hey, come here, sit down. Here's what we're going to do. Here's our plan for you. Don't like worry about this. And so if there's this expectation that a guy's going to be the starter because he was the starter all last year, I think they'd want to be really careful with it. In the case of the running back, that person would be Emmett Johnson, right? Many thought he did enough to earn that first nod. And maybe he does get it, but maybe they have a sense that Gabe Irvin is going to be the actual number one. Or maybe they have a sense that Dante Dowdell is going to be the actual number one. He's certainly the most complete back out of all of them. I guess we don't know that with Irvin because we haven't seen him healthy in, in quite some time. But so like either they have four fine running backs and they're going to truly try to figure it out over the first couple weeks of the season, or they think that one of them is, is a step above the others and they just don't want to say it. I think that's also possible. Mm. I think there's some games that you could be playing with this, but once again, Ramir or Emmett or Gabe or Dante Dowdell is your running back situation. Let's take a look at the wide receivers, Josh. Oh, I hear that room is popping. The room is popping. What do you like about this? Wide receiver, now they have it listed as 
wide receiver, wide receiver slot. So it's really like X, Y slot. Banks, number one, X. Let's say for organizational purposes. X, go and give it to you. Isaiah Nayer, wide receiver one, Y. Okay. Janiron Bonner, wide receiver one, slot. Jalen Lloyd, wide receiver 2X. Jack Corey Barney, wide receiver 2Y. Isaiah Garcia Castaneda, wide receiver 2 slot. How'd you see? Malachi Coleman, number 80 Malachi Coleman. Oh, not number 15, huh? Interesting. Wide receiver 3X. Alex Bullock, wide receiver 3Y. And I think, uh, you know, what I just said about the running backs is important in the conversation surrounding Alex Bullock. Like, I got a lot of snaps last year. We don't want to just cast him off and not put him on the tube deep. But they could have. Because he's not going to play. Like, simple as that. Wide receiver three in the slot, Carter Nelson, the man child. Oh. At Carter 69694286 on, uh, on Twitter. Josh, I mean, you know, it's it's cool to see it on paper because then you can get a real sense of it. Banks, Nayer, Lloyd, Bonner, Garcia Castaneda. Um and, and you know, we haven't seen Barney yet. But like I just I just named what? Six guys? Yep. Feel good about all of them. There's, I like all of yep, them. There's six deep at receiver. And then there is Coleman, Nelson, Barney, who I'm all, who all of them, it's like, yeah, high ceiling. Can't wait to see what happens. But you don't need them to be featured parts of mm-hmm. what they're doing this year. That's the real life development track. Like that is how, so rule set it on Friday. You know, we have an old team and a young team. There's two different teams mm-hmm. here. We have an old team and we have a young team. Um, that's a really nice setup. You normally it's just hear, a really great setup. Uh, like offensive line, defensive line, we want to rotate guys in and out so no one's ever tired. I mean, this team seems to be obviously doing a little bit of that, but also at the skill positions, those guys are just never going to have the opportunity to get tired. There's going to be fresh legs. Yeah, and out of that, you'll find out who the good players yeah. are. Yeah. Right. If you feel good about if you, you know, rule had the comment a couple of weeks ago where he was like, yeah, I think we got a bunch of guys who can execute right now. If you're in the two deep, if you're on this top, you know, however many guys are listed here, um, they feel good about your ability to execute third and six when you're backed up against a corner. Let's find out. Yeah. But who's going to who's mm-hmm. going to go out and make that play? Right. Yep. Uh, offensive line. Nothing really notable here. Uh, nothing that we didn't know if left to right. Corcoran Evans. Scott, Mazuka, Ben Hart. The backups are where it gets interesting, at, especially at the tackle positions. Not much there. We're talking about Gunnar Gatula and Grant Seagren. Um, those are your backup tackles at the moment. So cross your fingers on uh, on the starting tackles. Make sure that one works defensively. Um, nothing unexpected. Especially, you know, you got your top three on the defensive line: Robinson, Hutmaker, and uh, Jamari Butler. They've referred to Lenhart as basically a starter. Uh, they feel good about Van Poppel and what he did last year, Elijah Judy. There's also James Williams, and there's Kai Wallen. I like they have they have seven to eight guys who they're like, yeah, they're gonna all rotate through it, whatever, um, whatever kind of spot. Vincent Jackson pops up as the third nose tackle on there, so we'll see if he gets any clock this year. Linebackers. John Bullock with his backup being Vincent Shavers. Makai Bayer with his backup being Stephon Thompson. God, I wish we had heard about Stephon Thompson a little bit more this offseason. The transfer from Syracuse. But he provides depth. Jack Linebacker, MJ Sherman, Principal Uman Mielin. Corner one, Tommy Hill. Corner two, Marquis Buford. Their backups are Amari Sanders and Sierra Wright. Safeties, Malcolm Hartsog and Deshaun Singleton. Their backups being Derek Branch and Kobe Bretz. And Rover, Isaac Gifford, backed up by Ramir Stewart. I wouldn't be surprised if more guys entered into that conversation on that defensive backfield 
as well. But there is not a single or on the defensive side oh, of the ball. Not a single or solidify. Yeah, you got a you got a top, you know, twenty some guys, you know, twenty five about guys that you feel pretty good about back there. But there is an or at the kicker position. <gasps> Tristan Alvano or John Hull. Uh, I got news for you guys. Let us tell you something. You heard yeah. it here first. Yeah, it's going to be John Hull on Saturday. He's going to kick the kicks. So just prepare your bodies for that one. He's he's going to kick the kicks for Nebraska on Saturday. Much like the two-minute warning. Don't yeah. let it surprise you <laughs> in the moment. Uh, kickoffs, John Hull or Brian Buschini. We'll see what happens on that one. Weird battle that you're taking all the way to the end. <laughs> and then kick returner, Ramir Johnson or Ja'Cory. Barney. Okay. So there was only one, two, three, four, five, six oars in the entire depth chart, and three of them were at running back. Okay. <laughs> so hey, when you know, you know. When you know, you know. In, indeed. Indeed. You, you ready for these comments in the chat? Oh, what are they talking about? Oh, all sorts of things. Uh, let's see. Boxing True says linebackers are trash. Which ones? Like the uh, the 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 actual linebacker linebackers, it like just the middle says linebackers. Linebackers are trash. Bullock backed up by Shavers. Bayer backed up by Stephon Thompson. Is that what you're? Is that what you're? What boxing true is referring well, to? Maybe. I think. Uh, I think by the time we get to October, we're probably talking more about Vincent Shavers than we are yeah. about John Bullock. Mm -hmm. um, Coming on. And 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 I will say this, like to to boxing true's point, um, he uh, replies all of them, <laughs> or she, I don't know. Okay, so Bayer was a guy who, fla like he was a flash guy last year, and we are penciling. I mean, he's a starter now. He, you know, you had the Javen Wright injury. He's a starter now. Um, I, I'm not. I don't have the high ex expectations for him. I think he was a good flash guy for them last year. Um, maybe it's a big jump in a rule. That's all I'm saying. But you got an experienced player as your backup. That's not the worst thing in the world. MJ Sherman, that's a guy who from we just didn't hear much about him last year. I'd like to buy some stock, Josh. The stock doesn't cost much at the moment. I know he's a starter and I know he's a transfer from Georgia. The stock was certainly like if you wanted to buy when he transferred from Georgia to Nebraska, you would have had to pay a pretty penny. But it's gone down. It's the stock has kind of tanked on him. I'd like to buy some. I'd like to clean up some of that. Um, so I'll buy some stock on MJ Sherman going into this year. And then Prince Will obviously is a as a young guy. Um, you know, ceiling's high for him. Uh, I don't think it's trash. Sal comments in pretty concerned about that middle linebacker depth. Or Major League Baseball depth. I'm not sure. It just says MLB <laughs> depth. We just, I assume yeah. it's middle linebacker. Wow, people really people really took issue with the linebacker yeah. depth chart. Interesting. I just went through it. I'm not like I'm not like overly concerned. I'm not overly concerned. Matthew Pfeiffer. I don't think they have a whole lot of guys behind that, but I get it. Like, what do you you know? You have a lot of good athletes who I think you could stick in there. And the and the mm -hmm. great thing about that middle linebacker spot is. I mean, look at the way that they have it set up right now. Um, Bullock and Shavers bring different things to the table. Bayer and Thompson bring different things to the table. Bayer is your slower, plottier, you know, um, like stuff the run linebacker. Same thing with Bullock. Shavers and Thompson are both kind of long and rangy. Like you'll see Shavers. He's like a <laughs> heat seeking missile. Um, Thompson's got some length, some ability to cover in there, right? They bring different things. So I think like with that spot, you can mix it up however you'd like to, but I don't know. That's just my excuse. I suppose. Matthew Pfeiffer on the YouTube chat says Bullock on the opening depth chart last year, listed at 220, 230 this year. Gain hashtag gains, right? gains. text line wonders was James Williams listed. He was. He was listed as the uh he was listed as the third defensive end at Jamari Butler's position. So it went Butler, Lenhart, James Williams. Six six two fifty James Williams, by the way. Hello. He's still a he's still a gadget, you know, 
third down guy. Now the good th- the good part is they can use him whenever they want to this year. Um, last year they were very careful about which games they were using him in in, our, in order to keep his red shirt, but they wanted to just put him in against you know when 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 left with the opportunity to either play him play his one game either against like I think it was Wisconsin or Iowa or Maryland or Iowa. It was like yeah, let's which team passes more. Insert James Williams, and I think he got a sack in that game. So you get a couple of those last year. I don't know. Um, there's, there's your. That's big depth chart overreaction, ladies and gentlemen. Now, career starts on defense. Ty Robinson, thirty three, leads the way. Whoa. Career starts on offense. Ben Hart, forty two. Ben Scott, thirty nine. Of course, eleven at Nebraska last year. Turner Corcoran, thirty one. Micah Mazuka, 21. Uh, I mean, think about that. That's four of your offensive linemen, four of your starting offensive linemen who have at least 20 starts in their college careers. Not a bad thing, right? Nayer's got 13 starts. Uh, Banks, 11 uh, with... 10 of them last year and then one the year before, but he was a really productive receiver the year before that too. <laughs> Isaiah Garcia Casaneda and Ramir Johnson are funny on here because Ramir Johnson had, has eight starts. He has eight starts credited to him. Seven of them were in 2021. Isaiah Garcia Casaneda has seven starts attached to him. Seven of them were in 2021. Oh, it was a long time ago, Josh. Oh, yeah. 2021 yeah. might not seem like it was that long ago, but it indeed was. 